Hello, Ruben here from Mule Energy. Um, thanks for joining me today. So this is about the new Smart JBD BMS. It's a custom-made JBD BMS for Mueller Energy. So it's a 250 amp BMS, which you can't usually get as a Smart BMS. And it's got a novel added feature, which is basically that it has an output for an active balancer. So normally a BMS only has a passive balancer on board, or at least JBD BMSs. They're a 150 milliamp uh, resistor that will basically just uh, discharge the highest voltage cell. Um, and it does so by, by basically just burning off the additional energy as heat. Uh, it's only 150 milliamps, so that's where a active balancer such as this might come in. So the benefit of the active balancer is that it can operate at up to 5 amps. Generally it's a bit lower than that, um, but that's the maximum. And it takes the energy and it puts it into the capacitors and then connects to a lower um, lower voltage cell and discharges that energy. So you have a, a very, very low energy loss from this. The normal disadvantage of a active balancer is that with um, the more affordable versions such as this, um, is that you can't set at what voltage it, it basically cuts in and cuts out and some of them even balance for the entire range of, of the battery uh, state of charge which isn't always ideal. So what we've done here is there's an input here um, that connects to the active balancer output there and it basically balances whenever the passive balancer on board balances. So you can set it via the Bluetooth app and it does exactly what you want and when you want it. Then we have a nice little touch screen as well. It's a resistive touch screen. Um, it will give you cell voltage, temperatures, charge, discharge, and so forth. We'll get into that in detail once we've built the battery. Then we also have a Bluetooth module. Um, it just connects down here, quite simple. And if you have multiple batteries and you don't know which one's which, you can actually see there's a, a, a code at the bottom here um, that you, you can then see in the app and then you know which one's which and then you can give it its own individual name as well if you want to. And then we have this little guy here, which is a cable that goes into the SW or switch connector down here, which basically just allows you to switch off the, the discharge. Um, now, the reason you might want to do this is if you're connecting or disconnecting something, especially an inverter, normally when you connect or disconnect an inverter, uh, you'll get a nice spark, which isn't always the best. And um, if you connect your BMS securely first, then you don't get this spark and it's, it's just, well, it's a tiny bit safer, but it, it also makes sure you don't, you don't get any damage from the spark on the BMS. Um, it's probably not a massive issue, but it, it's just much better in my opinion. And the other thing is it also makes sure that if you accidentally short anything out while, you, uh, while you're, you're connecting or disconnecting something, you're not going to do any damage to any of the components. Now that connects in here as such and while we're at it we might also just get the Bluetooth module and put it in where it says BT for Bluetooth. And a nice click. Um, one thing I've left out is the this cable or these two cables actually which are NTCs or negative temperature coefficient temperature sensors. They basically ensure that you turn the BMS off if it's too hot, too cold. Um, yeah, so they go into the NTC port. Generally that's already plugged in. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. 
that leads us to this little cable here. Um, the red and black. Uh, this cable connects to the balance port on one side. You can see it's got a little, this little um, clip here, that's not focusing, but it's got this little tab here that goes on this end. And then the other side goes into the active balancer right here. Right here. Okay, so that's done. Um, now that leads us to this big and confusing wiring harness or wiring loom. Um, first thing we can do is we take this connector here that just goes to the active balancer and they're the, the well, balancing leads or sometimes call them sensing leads as well, but it's more for the BMS. Then you've got the connector, which is the equivalent to what we just plugged in, but for the BMS that goes to BC0 to BC4 and that goes in there. And then we've got a few more wires. So you can see this little white one here um, which is the RS485 port, which connects to well, the connector, which connects to the RS485 port here. And this is used in this instance to run the uh, little monitor here, the little screen. Um, speaking of the screen, you've got a two meter cable here. Yours might look slightly different in this box, but it's the same thing. Got this one here. That just simply goes in there. Click. Now, you've got your B minus and you've got your C minus. So the B minus, the B indicates it goes to the battery minus port. The C minus uh, is the common or connection port, which basically all your loads, charges, everything will connect to this side the internal battery cells that the, the negative port will connect to this side. Um, it's also worth noting these ones are M8 volts. Uh, they go in here and in here. Some, uh, some ring terminals are too small for, for M8. So if you prefer to use an M6 ring terminal, feel free to undo the middle one and connect it there and, and do it up again. Just make sure you do it up tightly enough. Um, it's also, the, the width you can also adjust if that's too wide. What you can do is you just take this off, take all three bolts off, flip it over, just to make sure this, this is pointing up. You can see it's, it's got a bit of depth to it. So you want that pointing up uh, so it's not interfering with the BMS itself. And yeah, you just flip that over and then you can connect to this one again. Um, but anyway, let's get into it and, and I'll show you exactly what you do. So we've got some cells here. Uh, these are 280 amp hour Eve cells. Uh, they're, they're quite nice. LF280Ks they are. Um, we sell these ones as well, so if, if you're interested, uh, please have a look. There'll be a link in the description. Um, similarly, we've got these epoxy boards um, that sh you, you, you definitely put, should put something between battery cells. Um, I'm a big fan of these epoxy boards. They're, they're, they're very sturdy, uh, non-conductive. Um, that's important because the case is actually connected to one of the electrodes. So if you if you have this in a car and it's rubbing, um, you you might get a short, and obviously that's not fantastic. Um, you you still you still won't get a fire, or you're you're highly unlikely to get any fire like you would with a lithium poly polymer or an M NMC cell. Um, but well, it's still not ideal, obviously. So what you do is you just connect them together like so. Um, interestingly, or the black terminal is the plus. 
Uh, the good thing about the EEPs is they've got a little plus and minus symbol here, so you remember which one's which, which is always good. Um, I mean, I've built a lot of these, but it's it's still always good to, to have confirmation what's the positive and what's the negative terminal. So you just connect them together like that. And the, oops, so yeah, there you go. That's why it's good to, to have the plus and the minus there. I nearly connected it the wrong way around. Um, and you can see you're alternating positive, negative, positive, negative here. So then you get onto the bus bars, which is just off screen because cells are fogging the entire screen. Um, but basically you, you can decide whether you want that to be the main positive or that to be the main negative. Um, I'll, I'll just make that the positive, so that means I connect a bus bar here, one here, and one there. And then you get to these wires. Sorry, generally this is a lot easier if you have a bit more space. I haven't really left enough room for myself. Um, you can see that the order is, you've got a red wire, which is obviously a positive, then a white, then a yellow, then a green, and then a black, and the black's obviously a main negative. So just make, make very sure um, that you follow that order, uh, otherwise you might be in for a bad time. So we're gonna start with the red one, which is our main positive, as we said before. So, that's a bit. So we've got our main positive here, and there you go. I'm just going to do these uh, finger tight. You, you should do them up a bit tighter than that, uh, probably around the five newton meter mark when you actually build it. Um, but given that I'll only have a, an extremely low current flow here, just for the testing, um, it's fine to do that for now. Then the next one, and I've got to be a bit careful that I don't touch anything while I'm doing this. The next one, oh, you heard there was <laughs> a little spark there. The next one is this one here. Should probably actually have these disconnected while I'm doing that. So let's do that. Okay, so we've got the white one done. in line was the yellow and again I've, I've messed this up a little bit um, make sure you take plenty of time when you do your own thing um, but it's just for demonstration purposes so it will be fine that goes on there like that and obviously we've got to put the not on the other end of the bus bar. Now we've just got two left. So we'll put the green on here. And finally, we're doing the black on here, but make sure you don't forget this one. Okay, then you plug this in there. I'm not sure if that was even on screen. Um, and you put the BC0 to BC4 back in the BMS. And then there's one step left, and that is connecting the cable from this terminal here to the B minus side on the BMS. So we'll, I'll just go and grab one and we'll do that in a second. Okay, so we connect a cable from the B minus on the BMS to the B minus on the B 
battery, I should have done that first, obviously. It's funny that you always make mistakes when you're trying to do a perfect job on a video, but um, yeah, probably me doing a few too many things at once. Now, um, this is your battery built, basically. Um, and, oh no, that's not usually the way you should screenshot, um, but we're just going to connect to it here. Uh, as I said, I've got a few BMSs here that we could connect to. Um, I can see from the, from the signal strength that it's this one here, but this is, again, the, the MAC address that I mentioned before. If you didn't know which BMS was what, it has that MAC address or the, those, those numbers um, on the back of the, of the, on the back of the Bluetooth. Okay. This is it. You can see we've got a total voltage of 13.6 volt. Uh, voltage high, 3.29, low 3.29, so yeah, pretty good. Um, state of charge, it's saying 39% here. This isn't necessarily completely accurate. Um, it's, it's something that will only work properly once it's, it's had a full charge and all the para parameters are set. Uh, now I haven't set any parameters here yet, so, so they might not be entirely accurate. But that's, that's basically it. You can see the discharge switch here is off, um, and I've set it on here again. Uh, you can also set it so that you're using the, the actual switch, the blue and the white wire that I showed you earlier. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Uh, then one final thing I wanted to show you was the little screen here. Um, you can see I, I think I think the discharge is actually off because of the, the, the two these two. There's a setting in the BMS uh, that you can turn it on and off. It must be turned. There you go. I've, I've connected these together manually for the time being, and if I let go, it's going to disconnect again. Um, so that's why I like this sort of setup. You can see the two temperatures, the two NTCs that I showed you before. Uh, you can also turn off charging if for whatever reason you want to turn that off. Normally you don't have to turn that one off manually because, it, it well, if there's going to be sparking, then you, you should be turning the charger off first. Um, this one gives you a current, if you've got a charge current or a discharge current. Uh, the, the, the thing I like is down the bottom here, it then also gives you how many hours that relates to. So if, if I was charging at, say, 10 amps, it would tell me, oh, very roughly, uh, 20 to 24 hours until it was full. Um, page 2 we've been to. Um, now status is locked because these are off and you can see the cell voltages here. The nice thing is on the BMS you saw that you only had two decimal points. Uh, here you've got three so you can see that we're out by the, the green is the highest, highest cell voltage and the blue is the lowest so you can see we're out by four millivolts which is pretty good. And that basically concludes uh, the quick introduction to the BMS. So, um, yeah, it, it is a fantastic BMS in my, my opinion. It's, it's likely the best value BMS in Australia um, and it's got capabilities that, that no other ones do that I know of. Um, a 5 amp five active balance are connected to a BMS. So if you're interested in this, uh, please have a look at the link below. Um, I'm sorry, I've sometimes turned things upside down. Uh, and at other times I'm facing the other way, uh, but this is basically it. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.